My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE. The third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 80. Day Day 3083 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition day 80, we are on page number 289 and the topic we will cover today is segmented bar graph. Topic of segmented bar graph. We did bar graph yesterday. What in the world is a segmented bar graph? That's what we are going to discuss today. Segmented bar graph is exactly what it says. It's just like the bar graph. It's just like the bar graph. There is no difference. Here is our simple bar graph. We are just going to make something up here. Here is a simple bar graph. And perhaps we are showing, perhaps you're showing enrollment, perhaps we're showing enrollment in three different colleges, A, B, C, or perhaps it's the same college, perhaps it's the same college, and we are showing the enrollment in the same college over the three years. Let's say 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2003, three different years of the same college. We are showing the enrollment here. That's a simple bar graph. Segmented bar graph is so cold because it has been segmented. It has been broken up into parts. So we may show we may show males and females. This is the percentage proportion of male. This is the female. This is again male and female. We, we can break it up into gender, male and female, or perhaps it shows the enrollment of part-time students and the full-time students, or perhaps it shows uh, perhaps you're showing 2001, 2003, 2003. Perhaps you're showing the number of household in a given town. These are the number of household in the given town, and this bar graph shows us the total number of households that is, and we have segmented it. We have broken up, broken it up into the homeowners and the renters. These these are the these are the household who are renting. These are the number of households who are renting over these three years, and these are the number of households that are homeowners. It could be in absolute frequency. It could be presented in absolute frequency, as in the number of household, or it could be shown in percentages which will be relative frequency. We talked about that yesterday also as to what the difference is between absolute frequency and relative frequency. Relative frequencies, as you know from yesterday, can be represented either by percentages, by fraction, by decimal. So maybe these are different percentages of all the household in 2001 in our town, what percentage of the household were renters and what percentage were owner-occupied. Or perhaps you're back to the same thing of college A. Perhaps it's some college here. Perhaps this is some college here. And now we have segment now we're going to segment it not in two parts, but four parts. Perhaps we're going to segment it into four parts. There we go. Now we segment it into four parts. And now the, these four parts here represent the, the, the freshmen, the sophomore, the juniors, and the seniors for the different years. And that's the idea. This, uh, this is called segmented bar graph. That's all it is. It's very simple, very straightforward. We're going to do example, uh, example 4.1.9 that you see on page number 289. The data that you see as, is, as it is here on the blackboard is not in the book. It is something I'm giving it to you. Based on this data, we can actually plot it. And once we have plotted it, we're going to erase this data because they're not going to give you both the graph and the data, obviously, in the exam. They're going to give you a bar graph, segmented bar graph in this case, and the, in the exam. And they're just going to ask us two or three questions based on that. That's all. So we're going to, we're going to answer a couple of questions, and that's all. Do you understand? Let's get going, shall we? So here we have, here we have, Enrollment for 2009 for five colleges, and these are the five colleges, college college A, B, C, D, and E, which means we're going to have five bar graphs. After I wrote all of this down, I realized that I did not leave myself enough room, but this is something we're going to need after we, after we finish plotting the graph. Uh, we're going to answer a couple of questions, and in one of the questions, we're going to have to compare percentages. Listen very carefully. In one of the questions, we're going to have to compare percentages to arrive at the right answer. Computing percentages sometimes can be very time consuming, very tedious, in which case many a times you can arrive at the correct answer as to which percentage is greater, we can arrive at the same answer by simply comparing fractions. So if you want to learn how to compare fractions quickly, how to compare fractions quickly, there are two series of videos you will find on my channel. One is simply called Basic Math. Simply called Basic Math. It has a series of 200 videos. You don't have to watch all 200 of them. Even if you just watch the first 100, you might get something out of it. But in particular, just type in this, just type in basic math, basic math, day 64, and you'll see a video which talks about comparing fractions. And then 
65 if you want to watch two of them. There is another series of video which is based on an exam. It's an exam that, we have, that I have talked about before. Exam called T E A S. T's. I know we are not here for T's, I know we are here for GRE. But there is a series of videos called T's Math, just like we have, if you were searching for GRE Math, you will simply type in GRE Math Day 110. Similarly, you will type in T's Math Day 110. And there are four videos in this series 110, 111, 112, 113. Four videos there, which also talks about comparing fractions. So both of those are quite, quite useful, at least as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion. Your opinion is your own, of course. So let's get going. And as, I, as we need rule, I'm going to erase. I'm going to erase that. So college A, you have three thousand full time, one thousand, one thousand part time. So let's do part time first, and then the full time because part times are a smaller number. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's what that's what we're going to do. It goes all the way for all the way to seven thousand five hundred. So let's pretend that this is eight thousand. Half of that is going to be four thousand. Another half is going to be six thousand. This is 2000. There we go. So we're going to start with college A. College A has 1000 part timers. So 1000 is going to be somewhere here. 1000 is going to be somewhere here. And 3000 full, full part time students and 3000 full time students. Total of 4000 is going to come up to here. And this is 1000. So let's, show, let's just show the part timers like this. This is the first one. B is 3000 and 4500. 4, 4, so this is 4,000, this is 6,000, this is 5,000, this is 4,500. It's going to some, come somewhere here. And now we have 1,500 part-timers. This is 1,000, this is 2,000, 1,500 is somewhere here. Voila. There is our college B, that was our college A. Let's keep on moving. This is, this is even this split, 2,400 and 2,500, almost, almost the same. So C is 2,400. 2400, this is 2000, this is 4000, this is 3000. This would have been 2500, or just a little under it. Just a little under it. Well, first, we have to do together, which is, which is almost 5000. So this is 4000, this is 5000, just a little under it. Voila. And now we continue this thing. As we said, almost half and half. Now I can I, I realize that the way I'm plotting the graph here uh, is very very difficult to figure out what the readings are. But in the exam, they will never put you in the situations where it is ambiguous. Their graphs are very accurate, and if there is any potential ambiguity, they remove it by giving you the additional information. So don't worry about it. Okay, just pretend this is a real exam. In the real exam, you would be able to read very easily whatever it is that they're giving you. We move on to D. We have six thousand four hundred. So this is 6,000, this is 8,000, this is 7,000, 6,400, this is 6,500, a little under it. 6,400, 6,400 of which 2,200 are part-timers. This is 2,000, this is 2,400, so 2,200 somewhere here. And just to leave any ambiguity out of it, I'm just going to probably leave the numbers here so that we can do answer the questions. Or you have the numbers, I'm going to raise it, we have it too, you have it too. 7,500, this is 6,000, this is 8,000, this is 7,000, 7,500 is way up here. And we have 3,500 part-timers, 2,000, 4,000, 3,000, 3,500. So that's the graph that is going to be given to us. I know it does not look too pretty, but you should look at the graph that is given in the book because I'm just trying to reproduce this. That's the exact same graph that I'm trying to reproduce it here. So look at the look at the uh, uh, picture in the graph, uh, pic pic picture that is given in the book, figure number three on page number 289. Let's answer a couple of questions. Now that we have the graph here, let's answer a couple of questions. Here's the first question. We don't need any of this thing. We know what it is, a segmented bar graph. Question number one. It says, what is the ratio? What is the ratio of part times? What is 
the ratio of part time to full time students for college B. Let's throw this marker away. This marker is of no good. More but is done. So let's look at college B. College B is right here. And we're looking for the ratio of part times to full times. We have a part time students, part times right here, college B was 1,500. 1,500. And then we have a total of 4,500. There we go. If we divide top and bottom by 1500, it's 1 to 3. If we divide top and bottom by 100, two zeros are going to go out and 15 goes into 45, 1 to 3. Is that the right answer? What do you think? Is that the right answer? The answer is no. That is not the right answer because that is not what they were asking. This is the ratio that, ratio that we put here is, is the ratio of part times to total. That, that ratio that you see here is part times to total. It's a very simple mistake. Very easy mistake to make. It is a very common mistake. Pay attention. This is wrong. That's not what they're asking. They're asking of the ratio of part times to full times. We have 1500 part times. We have 1500 part times. Right here, 1500. And the remaining are full time, which means 3000 of them are. It goes up. It goes to 2000. It goes 1500. 1500. And it goes all the way up to 4500, which means 3000 must be full time. 3,000 must be full time. As you can see, it's twice the amount. We divide top and bottom by 100, so two zeros are going to go away, and 15 goes in 30 twice. So what's the ratio? The ratio is 1 to 2. And of course, one of the answer choices is going to say 1 to 3. And then, of course, it's a sucker answer. It's for the people who do not want to pay attention. The second question is going, to, is going to be a little bit more tricky. That was very simple, very straightforward. Let's look at the second question. It says, Part B. It says arrange the percentage. Arrange the percentage of part time students. As a, P stands for part time students. As a percentage of total students. from least to greatest for all of these colleges. Of course, in the real exam, the wording is a little bit more refined. I'm just trying to do a quick job here. So let's go Let's get going. We're going to arrange what is the percentage of the part-time students as, a, as, as the total student body for all of these five colleges. And once we have them, we have to arrange them from least to greatest. Let's look at A. We shouldn't have Let's look at A. College A. College A, as you can clearly see here, so remember, we're looking for part times to total. Part times to total is what they're looking for as a percentage. Part times, if you look at A, is 1000. And the total, as we can see, it goes 1000 to 4000. Total number of students is 4000, which means for college A, part timers are 25%. 25%. Let's make a note of it here. So 25% was, was A. Then let's move on to college B. We just have to go one by one. College B is a, one more time, as I told you before in the real exam, the chart, if they are if they're asking you of something of this nature, you will be able to read whatever it is they're asking you. Never put they never put you in a situations where it's ambiguous, you cannot read it. For B, we have one and a half thousand part-timers right here and goes all the way up to four and a half thousand. Four and a half thousand. That's one third. Four and a half thousand. One and a half compared to four and a half, that's one third. The ratio is one to three, which is thirty-three percent. Thirty-three and one third percent if you like. Let's move on to C. C here, C actually was 
it went all the way up to almost it went all the way up to almost 5000 4900 they were evenly split 2500 2400 we're not going to do any work it's about 50 percent it's about 50 percent because half of half of them are part times half of the half of them are full times so we're not going to so there's no need to waste our time to figure out the exact percentages you understand it's approximately 50 percent let's move on to d because you know they're so far apart that there is no ambiguity yes just when it comes to arranging them from least to greatest let's move on to d d is going to be a little bit tricky for d I'm going to give you the figure actually that was given to us. For D, we were told that we have 2200 part timers and we had a total of 6400. Okay, listen to me here. Okay, this is where this where could we come in. This is the this is the ratio we're looking for. Again, part timers to total. We have 2200 part timers we were told and 6400 total. Let's divide the top and bottom by 100. If we divide top and bottom by 100, we end up with 22 over 64. 20 over 22 over 64. If you reduce it by 2, we're going to end up with this. This is going to become 11, and this is going to become 32. So this becomes 11 over 32. Stay with me. Let's put it down for the time being. 11 over 32. We have to find that it. We have to find that in terms of percentages. It's not a big deal. You could reach the calculator. Calculator is given on the screen and figure out what that percentage is. But I'm going to show you very quickly what to do with it in a second by using what we learned in these videos. Basic math, day 64 and 65, or T's series. T's math, especially if you're weak on percentage problems, ratio problems, uh, proportion problems, it has a lot of good stuff in this series, even though it's a different exam. T's, day 110 to 113, those four videos and those two videos. We'll come to that in a second. Let's look at E. E is right here. E, we were told that we have 3,500 3, part-timers. 3,500 part-timers and 7,500 total. 7,500 total. Let's see what we can do with that part. So we have we have three and a half over seven and a half. Okay, listen. Now, if you had to convert, if you had to convert a fraction into percentage, for example, if somebody asks us how much, what is this in percentage, one over four, well, one over four is 0.25, isn't it? But that's the decimal. If you have to express one over four as a percentage, what do we do? We need to multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. We have to multiply that by 100 to get the percentage of 25%. Yes or no? Of course. 1 over 2 is half, is 0.5, but if you need to convert that into percentage, we need to take that 1.5 and, and multiply it by 100 to finally get the percentage, 0.5 times 100. This is, if we leave it, leave it like this, 1, 3.5 over 7.5, it's going to be in decimal. We don't, want this, we don't want it in decimal, we want it in percentage. So let's multiply by 100. Let's multiply this, this, this fraction by 100. Okay, are you with me so far? So what we get here is 3.5 over 7.5 times 100. Let's multiply this part and this part top and bottom by 10. 3.5 over 7.5 is same as is same as 35 over 75, isn't it? Let's multiply that by 100. And now let's reduce it by 25. If you divide top and bottom by 25, 100 is going to become 4 and 75 is going to become 3. You still with me? Now let's divide by 3, shall we? How many 3's does 3 have? 3 has 1 3. How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has 1 3 as well, with the remainder of 2. With the remainder of 2. And that 2 needs to be divided by 3 as well. So it's 11 and 2 3rd times 4. 11 and 2 3rd times 4. Let's figure it out here. 11 and 2 3rd times 4. Or we can continue here. Let's do it up here. Remember, we have to do from least to greatest. You have to do least to greatest. So we're going to pick up from here 11 and 2 thirds. This is D. 11 and 2 third. Sorry. 11 and 2 third times 4. Are you with me so far? 11 times, 11 times 4 is going to be 44. And 4 times 2 third, 4 times 2 third is going to be 8 thirds. 4 times 2 thirds is going to be 8 thirds, because 4 times 2 is 8. 
8 thirds, 8 thirds can be written as 6 thirds plus 2 thirds and 6 thirds of course is 2 6 thirds is 2 so this, this is 44 and 8 thirds which is same as 46 and 2 thirds 46 and 2 thirds percent 46 and 2 thirds percent we still do not know these are very clear 25 is the smallest one 50 is the biggest one then comes 46 and 2 thirds this is 33 percent what is that in percentage 11 over 32 here's what we're going to do we need the room obviously so i'm going to erase most of it is we're done with a and b we don't need it anymore and we also don't need the graph so here's how we're going to figure out which one of these two guys is bigger this guy or that guy this guy or that guy which one is bigger comparing fractions this thing right here, 33 and 1 third, what is that in fraction? That's just 1 third. 33 and 1 third is, 33 and 1 third percent is just 1 third. That's why we have 33.33 percent. .33%. And this is 11, 11 over 32. Are you with me so far? Let's multiply both sides by 32. Let's multiply both sides by 32. As long as we do the same thing to both sides, we're not changing anything. In which case, the 32 will disappear, and here we'll end up with 1 times 32. Let's also multiply both sides by 3. If we do that, that 3 will go away. And what we're left here is 32 times 1, which is 32, and 11 times 3, which is 33, which tells us that this guy is bigger. 11 and 32 is bigger. I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but whatever it is, it's more than 33.3%. So there you go. We have our answers. We can arrange them from... from from least to greatest, I think what was told to us, least to greatest, so here we go, from least to greatest. Is that what was asked? Can we read it before we, before we, yes, from least to greatest. So the least one is going to be 25% right here. The answer is A, that's the least one. Then we're going to have 33%, which is going to be B. Then we're going to have this guy, 11 and, 11, 11 32nd. 11 and 30 seconds, that is this right here, D. Then we're going to have E. And finally, we're going to have C. Because C is the greatest. Because C is the greatest. Because C is 50%. So one more time, least to greatest, 25%. 33 and one third percent. I don't know what that is in percentage, but it is bigger than whatever it is. It's bigger than 33 and one third percent. And E is 46 and 2 to third percent and finally C which is 50 percent. There are your answer choices. This is how we compare. Now let's do the same thing again. Let's compare the same fraction again but let's do it a little bit faster. Let's find a quicker way. Okay watch, watch what happens. We were comparing we were comparing one third versus 11 and 11 30 second. Here's what we do. Follow the arrows. One, 32 times one. The arrow has to go up and point up. 32 times 1 is 32. We put it in this column. And then again do the same arrow. 3 times 11. The oh, arrow goes that way. 3 times 11 is 33. We put it in this column. 33 is bigger than 32. Therefore, this guy is bigger than that guy. It's bigger than that guy. So what we conclude is that 11 and 32nd, whatever it is, is bigger than that guy. It's actually a very common question. It's a very common question. It appears on the quantitative comparison question all the time. It's not a big deal, but they do appear on a regular basis in a quantitative comparison question. They will give you something like this. Let's do it here. We are done with all of that. I'm still not going to erase this thing. Watch these two videos. Basic math, they're 64 65. And T is, just type in T is math. That's what you're going to search for. T is math, they 110. And then 111, 112, 113, if you want to watch all four of them. So here's how it appears in, in, the, in, in the GRE. Column A and column B. Very simple. I'm just going to make something up and this is going to simply ask you which one is bigger. 7, 8 or 8, 9. Which fraction is bigger? Well, it's very simple. Just do what we just learned. 8 times 8 is 64. 7 times 9 is 63. And therefore this guy is bigger. But of course the question that they give you in the real exam are a little bit more sophisticated because this is too primitive. It, uh, it, it's not as exciting. But the ones that appear in the ex real exam, you can't really tell by looking at them. You actually have to waste your time either doing it out in terms of percentages 
or use this thing. And that's what you're going to learn in these six videos. That was it for today. I'm not going to start a new topic because the next topic is something else. The next topic is histogram. That's the next topic we're going to do tomorrow, histogram. And after histogram, the topic after that is uh, pie chart. That's our next topic, the day after tomorrow. And then two days from today, we're going to do the topic that you see, which is scatter plot. And then after that, the line graph. And that will be the end of it. And then we'll start doing the numerical problems that you see on 4.2, beginning with page 294. You understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.